used to be toilets there with glue sniffers in. Otherwise we'd all be speaking French here. Is it Crown Green? He won that battle with the help of the people of Swansea and this valley. That's probably enough of Morriston Park. Let's go at this exit. Luckily for us, we are going down there this time. Time for a bit of speed. Let's go around the round church, perfect. If the Dukes of Hazard were you now, they'd be straight over it, wouldn't they? Wow, this is a boat ramp. Other stuff. <laughs> How can I've never seen this before? Go on you Dylan, you put us on the map. Business as usual. I don't think so. There's a coffin in front of his porch in his house. There you go, Derek's music. Back in the day, he wanted to play the coach house. Still selling gig tickets. That's what happens when you live in Swansea. You get good at hills. There's a shop there, still a chip shop. That's good to know. The old chip shops are still surviving in Wales. <laughs> Down the famous Pentaport Hill it is. I've cycled up this so many times. It's quite nice to go down it for a change. Ooh, it's a bit fresh though. See where you come from Wales and you ride a bike, you do a lot of hills. A lot of hills. And one of the steepest hills in the whole of Swansea is right here on the right. I think we'll just have a quick look at it. I ain't gonna go up it. It's called Pleasant Street. I'm gonna show you the entrance. I'm gonna show you the hill, but I'm not going up it because I've just ridden past the top of it, so it's kinda no point. Doesn't look so bad now. I could go up that. So if you was a, a bike rider wanted to do some training, you could just do loops of this all day. Go up here, go across, come around Pentapol Hill, come back around and go up and do it again. Over and over if you wanted to. But I'm not doing that. Because I'm not crazy anymore. Well, one thing I've noticed, this building on the right here used to be a pub. There's our theme again. It was never very popular, but it was a pub. And it's gone. I used to use a snooker club up there. My first cycle bike shop was there. I'm just waffling on anyway. There's a musical reference behind there, but I won't bother with that one. We did record about four or five songs in there once. Just the other side of this building. Now that's a church, isn't it? That is a monster of a church. Capilla Tabernacle. There's a church, which is also a roundabout. So, if you wanted a reference, say, oh, you know where the round church is? And we'd say, yes. Let's go around the round church, perfect. Either church is closed now, good God. Wow, what is going on here? Urbex's dream? Flip the neck. Lots of stuff to fall down on your head in there. What a nice old building. Hello, Earth boys. Are you watching? Look at that. What have we got here? We have got the wonderful, the one and only River Tawi. As in Swansea or Abba Tawi. The Tawi. Look at it. It's lovely. Runs right through the city. And this river, of course, used to be tidal. Probably not up this high, I wouldn't have thought, but it used to be a, a tidal river up to a point. I don't know where that point was, but I can see some little rapids and stuff up there. Anyway, hopefully they've made a nice little cycle path out of it now. So let's see what we come across riding down the Tawi. Nice cycle tracks, peace and quiet, greenery. Oh, a bit of a steep hill that I didn't expect. This is what you get. Of course, here in front of us, we've got the Swansea Stadium. This very big, impressive football and rugby stadium and maybe even cricket. So back when Swansea was in the Premier League, I guess they had to improve conditions. They would have had some money from the Premier League to improve their status. 
and built it up. Oh, I can see a little bit inside the ground there, just about. There we go, we can just about see through the gap there. See all those new built flats over there? Actually, I think that very spot is where my father used to work, if I've got it right. I'm pretty sure that was where the Addis factory was. And he used to have a little balcony overlooking the river here, just down below. <laughs> We've got the remains of an old bridge here. Who's going to jump that then, eh? If the Duke's a hazard with you now, they'd be straight over it, wouldn't they? Oh, we've got us a paddle border coming up as well. He's not a young bloke either. Fit people around here, see? Healthy. See all the wonderful things you can do here if you lived in Swansea? <laughs> So this area of new builds all along here that we can see, which replaced the factory where my father used to work, this is called the Copper Quarter. I can't wait to go up a flipping hill, I'm cold. So they've named this area the Copper Quarter. Why have they called it the Copper Quarter? Well, Swansea was of course well known in the world eventually as being the copper capital of the world, to the point where they called it actually Copperopolis and it's thought to have started in around 1717 that's when Swansea started to really expand and grow into this big city that it is today so the Swansea Towie Valley which is where we are now has a natural harbour at the end where the river reaches the sea and also has great accessibility from that point across the sea to North Cornwall and in North Cornwall is where most of the copper ore came from. So they would bring the copper ore across to Swansea where it would be refined and smelted. Now there's a reason why they did it that way around. They brought the ore across from Cornwall rather than taking the coal from Wales over that direction. Now why was that? The simple reason was it made economic sense because to be able to smelt one tonne of copper ore and refine it took about three to four tonnes of coal. So you're not going to lug three to four tonnes of coal in one direction to smelt one tonne of ore. You're going to do it the other way around. And then send it on to the Midlands of England where it would be produced into whatever was needed. At one point there were up to nine copper works here in the Swansea Valley. On the River Towie, just down beside me, it was a safe harbour at the end for small boats. They could bring the ore up the river to the refineries, and they could also take away the refined copper when it was finished. Just spotted something here, just want to have a little look down here. Get up here. Oh. oh God, wrong gear again. Push, 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 push. You can do it. Oh, it's a spiral. <laughs> How about this? There we go. You can see it. This is the remains of one of the copper works, probably one of the last ones. But this valley, this would have been full of them. Nine of them, all along this valley somewhere, all different locations. And those chimneys, they would have been everywhere. You can imagine the industrial era, smoke pouring out of those chimneys, all up and down this place. And apparently the area of Havard, the Havard, which is just across the way there, that had about 15,000 people in it and supposedly 10,000 of those people were employed in the copper smelting industry in some shape or form whether it be the boats whether it be smelting or anything else and that's why Swansea became known as the world's capital of copper and brass production this was in the sort of mid 1800s by this time 1823 mid 18th century when this was at its peak so one of the big claims about the area is a little fact. In 1805, there was a battle, the Battle of Trafalgar. 
with Admiral Nelson. Now, Admiral Nelson, he obviously won that battle, but he didn't win it alone. He won that battle with the help of the people of Swansea and this valley. And how was that? Well, he lined his ships, the bottoms of his ships, with the purest, most refined copper that the Swansea Valley could produce. And in doing so, he enabled those ships to have much more maneuverability in the water. And they say that that maneuverability out on the seas against the French allowed him to strategically get into better positions and basically win the battle. Swansea helped win the Battle of Trafalgar. There you go. Otherwise, we'd all be speaking French here. Let's see if I can get down over that little, what looks like a bridge over there, without doing myself an injury. I think this is doable. Oh, to be on a mountain bike, I'd be flying down here. Hmm, it's a bit rough. I'm sure this would have been an old bridge by the looks of it. Well, that'd be fun, wouldn't it? On a mountain bike. Ugh. Stay out of that, I think. Well, some sort of bridge and walkway and who knows what. So this is the historic Tower Valley. With the gorse bushes. Look at this. Wow, this is a boat ramp. Oh wow, we've got a boat ramp clearly on a little harbour. Wow, <sighs> obligatory Tesco trolley, never mind that. Look at this. So this, okay, this definitely, there would have been another works here, I can see another wall over there. This would have been a smelting factory, no doubt. Boats probably would have sailed up, come into this harbour here. Probably the factory would have been just there by the looks of it. So we'd have had one here, one just up there. I can still see the chimney of the other one. How can I have never seen this before? These are the retaining outside walls of a, probably what would have been a factory here maybe? Perhaps, it's possible. Up we go. So is that interesting? The history of the Swansea Tawi Valley copper industry and how we were once the center of the world here for producing copper and brass and how we helped to win the Battle of Trafalgar by supplying copper to the bottoms of the ships that were at war with the French and Admiral Nelson chose Swansea's copper as the purest in the world to line his ships with. Is that not a good fact or what? Come on, Swansea, get down here. Have a look around. Look at this. See what we've got to offer in Twin Town. I love the irony of this one. Business as usual. I don't think so. Another one of Swansea's rundown buildings. I like the graffiti there, the ABCD. <laughs> I wonder if that's a rehearsal room. Hmm, could be. Right, more quick musical facts. Won't linger on this one too long. But right here, which I'll show you in a second, used to be a cracking pub called the Cardiff Arms. And in one of the bands I was in, oh man, it was a great band. We used to play every second Thursday night here in this pub, a band called Whack Em Out. Glenn, I know you're out there. Charlie Farley, John Lloyd, Big Maggie. Some of the greatest musicians you could ever imagine playing with. And talk about imposter syndrome, here I was, some kid on the bass playing with like absolute local heroes, I couldn't believe my luck. To me they were gods, they were, they were my idols, these people. And I got a gig with them. And we played all sorts of covers and had some of the wildest rock nights you can ever imagine. Right here, in what was the Cardiff Arms, and which is now, <coughs> it's not even a closed pub, it's not even anything, it's nothing, it's gone, 100%. Great few months of doing that. There you go. Another one bites the dust. 
So I suppose we start to enter the era of Twin Town now. Now Twin Town is a cult classic film based entirely on life in Swansea. And if you like cult classics and British films, this is a must see if you don't know about it already. Twin Town was written by one of the writers who made Train Spotting. So it gives you an idea of the category it was in. Uh, and it was also written by a chap called Paul Durden. And Paul Durden, I think, died not so long ago, uh, but he was a great bloke. And Durden used to own a studio, a, a rehearsal studio that we used to use regularly. But Durden had a studio down here, and we used to come and rehearse in it. Let's say, yes, it was in there and into this side, which has now been done. Durden was quite a character. None of us knew he was a writer, and he wrote this film, Twin, Twin Town. It's a fantastic film, fantastic film. You've got to see it. And I'll tell you a story very quickly whilst we look at the old castle cinema. So to get the keys off <coughs> Paul to use the studio just down there, the rehearsals, uh, he used to pop around his house on a Sunday morning or something and pick up the keys. And one morning I went round there to, to grab the keys off him. And I got up to the front of his house, which was a mile or so away from here. And uh, there's a coffin upright in front of his porch in his house. I got to the door, knocked the door, I said, um, all right, Paul, I've got the keys for the studio, and um, what's with the coffin? Oh, well, I can't really tell you about that, he said. But it's a coffin, and it's here, and I'm, I'm having to look after it for a while. So, uh, maybe you'll find out one day, he said. <laughs> anyway, weeks went by, whatever, months went by, and then all of a sudden, Twin Town the film was released, which I knew nothing about, not many of us did. And uh, there was a scene in it somewhere where there was a coffin. Anyway, so he was just looking after it, doing the filming. Good days. What you can see here is Swansea Castle. Everybody knows Swansea Castle in this area, of course. And the castle has stood on this site since at least the 13th or 14th century. So we'll just have a little ride up beside it now and see where it comes out. A castle right bang in the middle of the city centre. How's that? So they reckon a castle stood on this site for a lot longer, but definitely ruins have been here since the 12th or 13th century, or 13th or 14th century. And this area that we're coming up to now, down here is all known as Castle Square, for pretty obvious reasons. Hang on, I'll get a better look from here. Here we are. I don't think I've ever really been this close to it. Huh. There we go. It smells like a castle. Well, that's the post office. Well, it was the post office building behind it. I think. Dungeon? Anybody? Swansea Castle, Castle Square. And that's where we leave part three. Next week, there'd be more exploring, more history, and even more famous characters.